Good afternoon. I'd like to introduce you to a few people who've been important in my life. This is my granddad, Philip Mazzara, a first generation American who retired from the Navy as a chief warrant officer after more than 30 years of service. Standing next to my granddad in this photo is my dad, Philip Mazzara. <laughs> he enlisted in the Navy during the Vietnam War and served from 1971 to 1973. Any guess who's next? <laughs> this is me, 35 years ago. My name is also Philip Mazzara. And not surprisingly, I grew up associating service with a uniform. And so as a young man interested in public service, I joined the military when I was 18 and spent more than a decade on active duty as a Navy pilot. <clears throat> but the most enduring lesson of my time in the Navy is that public service is not about what you wear, but about what you do. <clears throat> and so I'd like to talk with you today about public service as a private individual. <clears throat> in 2004, I was stationed here in California, just over the mountains in the Central Valley in a small town called Lemoore. I remember driving in my car on the way to base one morning and passing a large billboard on the side of the road that I hadn't noticed before. There was a picture of a young girl on it. Sitting all alone in the photo, she seemed so sad and helpless. It was almost as if she was staring right back at me. The message on the billboard was simple. It said, speak up for a child. Now, as I would come to find out, that phrase, speak up for a child, is the slogan of the national nonprofit organization called Court Appointed Special Advocates, or CASA for short. CASA volunteers are appointed by judges to advocate for the best interest of abused and neglected children and to help them find safe, permanent homes. That message, Speak Up for a Child, moved me that morning for a couple reasons. First, and perhaps naively, I couldn't imagine that there were children in my community who were being mistreated and who didn't have a voice. Second, my wife Misty was seven months pregnant with our daughter Madeline. As a soon-to-be father, I wanted to help other children find the same love and stability that my own daughter would know. I would eventually become a CASA volunteer. And one of my most vivid memories is working on the case of a young girl with special needs. She was so bright and energetic and so young at that point that she couldn't quite pronounce my name Phil. So it came out as feel, F-E-E-L. She's in a safe home now. The result, not just of my voice, but of a chorus of voices speaking up for this young child. You see, I worked alongside a talented nonprofit director, a dedicated social worker, and an incredible foster mother, all of whom were serving in their own way. And not one of them wore uniforms. Now, for many of you in this room, this comes as no big surprise. If you've discovered the rewards of public service, I'm not asking you to start. I'm asking you to never stop. But for those of you like me that have ever wondered how you can make a difference without putting on a uniform or working for the government or joining a social enterprise, I can tell you you don't have to give up your chosen career to serve. You see, Public service isn't the uniform you wear, or your job title, or the industry you work in. Public service is the measure you give of yourself. <clears throat> now, I'd like to tell you that my own service was solely the result of a personal sense of duty, but that wouldn't be the whole story. You see, serving also brought me an immense sense of personal satisfaction and fulfillment, something that's actually very hard to describe. So instead, I'd like to share with you some more concrete examples of how serving can help you develop skills and talents you never knew you had. In the military, some very patient flight instructors taught me to fly. <laughs> and then to land a plane on the deck of an aircraft carrier. An amazing experience. Actually, I'd like to qualify that. It was an amazing experience during the day. At night, it was just scary. <laughs> As a child advocate, I got to stand up in a courtroom and practice my persuasive skills in front of a judge. An incredible opportunity. And now as a volunteer in Menlo Park, I'm getting an inside view of local government 
as I work here at Stanford on a certificate in public management. So you see, service isn't all about giving. In fact, it's a pretty balanced equation. You get to practice your private sector skills in a public sector or nonprofit environment, making you a more versatile, well-rounded leader. And you get to connect with a network of other professionals who are giving back. In 2012 alone, one in four adults in the United States, nearly 65 million people, volunteered their time in a variety of different types of organizations, from civic to religious to educational. And it's not just retirees and teenagers. 35 to 44-year-olds were the most likely to give their time, with higher rates of volunteering among individuals with higher levels of education. Now, I remember a call to service I heard not too long ago. You see, before I came to the GSB, I spent two years just across campus at Stanford Law School. Yes, I will be spending four years here at Stanford instead of just two. As a side note, one of the unexpected benefits of a joint degree is that it's given me some credibility with my daughter Madeline, who's now in fourth grade. As we sit around the kitchen table doing homework, I can remind her that I'm in the 19th grade. <laughs> But back on that first day of law school orientation, sitting in a lecture hall not unlike this classroom, Professor George Fisher talked to the incoming class about professional responsibility. Lawyers receive special training that gives them a unique ability to serve others. No one but an attorney can provide the advice or representation that is needed by so many who can't afford or don't have access to legal services. And so Professor Fisher said, regardless of the kind of lawyer you become, make a commitment to always have at least one pro bono case. But I can't help but think the broader message resonates here as well. You see, access to justice isn't the only problem we face. Just as we need lawyers to help the unserved and underserved, we need leaders to address the problems facing our communities and our country. It doesn't matter if you're a banker investor, consultant, analyst, or manager, an organization out there could benefit from your expertise and skills. As future graduates of the GSB, as alumni of our nation's business schools, as successful professionals in the private sector, we too have unique ability to serve others. There are so many different opportunities and levels of commitment, from volunteering with a nonprofit organization or civic association, to serving on a school board or city council. But I understand that for many of you, the hard part isn't deciding what you're passionate about or what expertise you have to offer. The hard part is matching your skills with a worthy cause. So I'd like to recommend a resource. Taproot is a national nonprofit founded here in San Francisco in 2001 that makes business talent available to organizations working to improve society. In the Bay Area alone, they've matched thousands of professionals with nonprofits that need help in areas like strategy, <coughs> marketing, and finance. If you're unsure about where you can best use your skills for the public good, Taproot can help. Now, I will always be grateful for the opportunity to have served my country in uniform. It was one of the most rewarding experiences in my life. But I'm equally as heartened to know that I can continue to serve, even though I no longer wear the uniform of a US service member. I still want to give back. I want to set an example for my daughter. And I have faith in the collective power of private citizens doing public good. So I invite you to join me, not by abandoning your career, but by incorporating public service into it. Think about the amazing talent you have to offer. Think about the personal fulfillment and professional growth you'll get. Now imagine what the world would look like if we all did. Thank you. Mm -hmm.